Okay, our next case is Hamer versus Sidway. And uh, this is a, an old, very popular case. And the first question, state the facts. State the facts of Hamer versus Sidway. Okay? And if you were to answer that question in class, you'd say something like this. This is a dispute regarding a claim made by a young man whose uncle promised him $5,000 if the nephew promised that he would refrain from drinking, using tobacco, swearing, and playing cards or billiards for money until he became 21 years of age. And at that time, the uncle would pay the nephew $5,000. And apparently what happened was the nephew fully performed. He re refrained from participating in these activities until he's 21 years of age. And then he went to his uh, uncle, told his uncle, hey, uncle, I, um, I've, I've performed. I've, I've done what I was uh, asked to do. And um, I'd like to get my $5,000. So his uncle, he, he sent a, a letter to his uncle to that effect, and the uncle sent a, a letter back to the nephew. And his, the, the uncle essentially said, well, I'm glad that you performed. I'm glad that you were able to uh, hold up your end of the bargain. Um, I just want to let you know that you're, I've got your $5,000. Your $5,000 is, is good. It's, it's put away. Uh, but I just want to give you some advice here, nephew, because uh, it's important. You should not really have this money right now because you're only 21. It's a lot of money. Uh, the year is 1891, and you know these days that's a lot of money. Uh, and we don't want to see you squander it, you know, in a short period of time. Because uh, me, as your uncle, took a, it took me a long time to, to 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 get this kind of money, and I don't want to see you squander it. I don't want to see you get in any you know, unnecessary trouble with this kind of money. So what I'd like to do is hold on to this money for you for a certain period of time until I think that you're ready to, to, to handle it. Now, bear in mind, you, I've got your money, your money set aside, it's okay, but you know, I, I just would like for you to take my advice and I'll hold on to the money for you. So the nephew says, okay, uncle, you know, that sounds like pretty good advice. Uh, I will, uh, I, I agree, so you can hold on to the money for me. Uh, you know, we'll just keep it in, in, in that separate account. The uncle died. Okay, the uncle passed away before he could actually physically give the money to the uh, nephew. So the executor of the uncle's estate comes up and says, look, this contract is no good, there's no consideration. And he refuses to uh, pay the $5,000 to the nephew. So that's, that's the basis of the dispute in this particular case. Okay, now the next question would be something like, what did the court mean by consideration? And, and, and basically, consideration is one of the essential, essential components of any contract. Consideration is uh, key to this case, and it's important to uh, understand what we're, ta what we're talking about. Basically, in the law, in order to have a valid contract, there must be consideration. Something of value must be exchanged. Uh, there's a promise for a value, a promise for a promise. Something. Something of value has to be, be exchanged. So when we say consideration, and when the, uh, the court was talking about consideration in this case, the court is talking about something of value. So that was the uh, consideration in this particular case. Um, and the next question might be, why did the defendant testator, the defendant testator argue that there was no consideration? What was, the, what, was the, what was the point of this, uh, of, of not giving the, you know, the, the young man his money, the money that was promised to him? And basically, the defendant was saying, look, he refrained from doing things that were harmful to him. I mean, by, by not engaging in these activities, by, not, by promising not to drink or use tobacco or swearing or playing cards of, for, or billiards for money until he became 21 years of age, he was doing things that were basically beneficial to him. So in a situation like this, our argument is that uh, we shouldn't have to pay him anything because he didn't have, there was no consideration. There was nothing of value that he gave up. It was a benefit to him and he shouldn't be paid for his own benefit. So that was, that was the argument raised by the defendant. Next question, 
what would have been the result in this case if the court had found lack of consideration? What, what what's, this, what's this whole consideration argument mean? Well, essentially what it means is that the defendant would have won. If the court had found in this particular case that there was no consideration, then the court would have uh, found in favor of the defense and the defendant would not have been forced to pay the $5,000 to the nephew, to the uh, decedent's nephew. Next question, what was the court's rationale in finding for the plaintiff? Well, that's a very good question, and, and it's a very important uh, question because it's, it's key to understanding this particular case and, and why this particular case is important to the law. And here's what the court said. The court said that courts will not ask whether the thing which forms the consideration does in fact benefit the promisee or a third party or is of any substantial value to anyone. It is enough that something is promised, done, foreborn, or suffered by the party to whom the promise is made as consideration for the promise made to him. Basically, the court is saying, we're not going to look into that. As long as we're not going to, we're going to, we're not going to argue or, or, or investigate whether or not the, there was a benefit uh, that was uh, incidentally incurred to the person who made the promise. We will just look to see if there was some substantial value to the person who uh, received the promise. And that was the uh, outcome of that particular case. 